This is the Sagrada Familia Basilica in Barcelona and here you see the entrance to the metro train which is the L2 or the L5 metro which comes to this station here Sagrada Familia station. So you just get out right here and you're right there at the church. So let's take a walk around the church while I explain to you your options for visiting and give you some tips on visiting this church. The first thing you need to know about visiting is that the time of day and the type of weather outside will greatly affect your experience inside the church. And that's because of all the stained glass windows you really want to visit on a sunny day and during probably around noon to three o'clock in the afternoon to get the maximum effect of the light shining through the stained glass windows. Now, like a lot of tourist attractions that have big crowds coming through but can accommodate all of them at once, the tickets you buy here are, are sold by the time you're going to visit. So you have to select the time of the day and you have to show up for that, that time to be let in with the, the ticket that you have. So if you buy a ticket for 115, you have to get on the line and come in when they're letting in the people with the 115 ticket, otherwise you cannot get in. Also, because it is so popular uh, and the high season is from May to October, if you know you're coming here, try to check the weather ahead of time, pick the sunniest day that you can find, and try to book a few days in advance because you may find out that if you're trying to book for the next day or two, it may be sold out because the tickets do sell out. So definitely try to buy at least two three days in advance and try to buy the time slots between probably about 12 to 3 o'clock p.m. which of course those are going to be the most popular so you really do need to try to book in advance at least a few days. To actually buy the tickets go to sagradafamilia.org and see which option of ticket you would like and just to let you know the cheapest option to visit is actually free if you go on a Sunday morning mass at 9 a.m. so I believe the mass is every Sunday at 9 a.m. and it's free for everybody until it fills up so I don't know how crowded it gets but if you want to go there for free you can try going there on a Sunday morning if you choose to. The cheapest ticket option on their website is for the Gaudi House Museum which actually doesn't have anything to do with Sagrada Familia, the, the church itself. This is a, a house that's about 1.2 miles away over in Park Gel which is uh, the Gaudi Park which you may want to visit anyway later on but this is completely separate so this is the first option and that's 5.5 euros the next option is the Sagrada Familia basic ticket and that's 17 euros and the next option is 25 euros and that's the same thing but it includes the audio guide and this is the option that I chose when I went and is the audio guide worth another eight euros? Yeah, if, if it's your first time going there, it's definitely helpful. It's not, it's not super packed with information, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, definitely helps you out. So I would recommend getting the audio guide if you do go at least for the first time. The next type of ticket is 26 euros and that's the tour with a guided tour so I guess instead of the audio guide they give you a guided tour and the next ticket is 27 euros and that's the Sagrada Familia with the audio guide and the Gaudi House Museum ticket and lastly the most expensive tour is 32 euros and that is the regular ticket plus the audio guide plus the tower so I did not do this but you can go up to 
one of the towers and overlook the city so it sounds it sounds pretty good if i were to go again i would probably take this option and on a related note you can go to the barcelona cathedral and go up to the roof and walk around on the roof there's actual walkways on the roof so you can overlook the city from there as well as you can see from the outside of this building it is still under construction and it's due to be finished in 2026 there's still some more towers that they're building on this building so to get into the tour it is on the opposite side of this entrance here um, and be aware that they have really heavy security so it's it's pretty much like going to an airport they go through the metal detectors and all your bags or whatever you're carrying gets scanned and everything so um, if you want to get through quickly try to bring as little stuff as possible with you so this is the start of the tour after you get through the security and this is the entrance to the church and from the street my first impression of the outside looked kind of like a, a melting candle like how the wax runs down a candle that's been lit for a long time but when you get closer you see that's not the case and also the audio guide lets you know what this represents and so that stuff that looks kind of like a waxy candle is really like leaves and trees and animals so this represents this side represents the birth of Christ and symbolically it's on the northeast side of the building which the sun rises in the east so that symbolizes the birth of Jesus um, when the sun comes up in the morning so you see here uh, even above the entranceway you see these metal leaves um, and the doors also have a leaf pattern on them so this and you also have the animals on the right over there so this whole side symbolizes birth and life as you walk into the church and take a quick look around the first thing that i noticed is that this is not like most churches that i've been in before uh, matter of fact i don't remember any church that looks quite like this while the layout is in the shape of a cross like most churches uh, the pillars that support the ceiling are way different than anything I've seen in any church and I've been to a lot of churches I would say so looking up at these pillars you see they kind of split off almost like tree branches and that's exactly what they're supposed to look like uh, these pillars are supposed to look like trees and the tops are supposed to be like tree branches and the canopy of a forest so up top in a forest you would have some light coming through uh, some sunlight getting past the canopy the leaves of the forest and getting into the forest and that's what this is supposed to look like and I gotta say it does a really great job of doing that and the way the light comes in from the top and from the sides is really something I've never seen before and so this this right here is the reason why I said that you should really try to come here on a sunny day and between the hours of probably 12 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon to get the full effect of the light coming through the stained glass from both sides and the top I mean it's it's really a sight to see now for some history on this church it wasn't actually started by Gaudi 
It was started in 1882 by Francisco de Paula del Villar. And he lasted one year, and then he resigned in 1883, and Anthony Gaudi took over the project. And Gaudi worked on this church for about 43 years until his death in 1926. And he is actually buried in a crypt uh, in the basement of this church. And when he died, the project was less than 25% complete. And so here you see, um, you know, how many years later, almost 100 years, it's coming on 100 years later, and it's still not actually complete yet, although it is scheduled to be completed in 2026 on the 100th uh, year anniversary of Gaudi's death. And tragically enough, Gaudi was actually killed by a trolley car in Barcelona. Dali died when he was about 74 years old, and had he not been hit by the trolley, who knows how long he would have lived, and if that would have affected the outcome of this church, because this church was built on private donations and so construction progressed pretty slowly and was interrupted during the Spanish Civil War. And in 1936, some revolutionaries set fire to the crypt and broke their way into his workshop and they partially destroyed Gaudi's original plans, his drawings, and his plaster models. And so that led to about 16 years of work to piece together the fragments of the master model that he had built. So not only did this slow down the construction of the church, I'm sure, but it might have changed it in some ways. Construction progress after that was intermittent and it wasn't until later on when technologies like computer-aided design and computerized numerical control CNC machines enabled much faster progress in the construction. And in 2010, they reached the midpoint of construction. And in that year, Pope Benedict XVI consecrated uh, the church as a minor basilica and so he came here in 2010 to do this ceremony. Even though the church is the most popular tourist attraction in Barcelona, it has a long history of splitting the opinion of the residents of Barcelona. So initially they thought it might compete with Barcelona's cathedral, and so some people weren't happy with that. Other people didn't like Gaudi's design itself, and even other people weren't happy that the possibility that the work after Gaudi's death disregarded his design. So you can't really make everybody happy. <laughs> and on top of that, in 2007, they proposed to build a tunnel for Spain's high-speed rail link to France right under the church. And so a lot of people were worried that that would disturb the stability of the church and possibly could make it fall in the future with too much vibration from the trains going beneath it. So to dampen any vibration from the trains, they embedded the train tracks in an elastic material. The train tunnel has been operational since 2013, and there hasn't been any reports of any kind of damage from vibration of the tracks since then, so apparently it worked. So. Let's take one last look at the inside of the church before we go outside and look at the Passion facade. And 
you can see the light from the stained glass just flooding into this church with all these different colors. Um, it's really amazing to see in person. So as we come outside, you see these big metal doors here on the other side in the nativity facade they were all leaves um, these doors are have all kinds of writing on it and they are excerpts from the passion of the christ from the new testament uh, mostly in in catalan but in all kinds of languages uh, so it's just a bunch of words in different languages from the new testament so we're going to go outside and look at the opposite sculptures from the nativity scene this is the passion of the christ scene where jesus is crucified and the first thing you'll notice is the different kind of style of the sculptures and the the kind of plainness and dryness and long hard lines not a lot of curves um, all of this is done according to Gaudi now he didn't sculpt these um, Joseph Maria Subarach did uh, so but he did leave the details for this scene and so his vision was to make the whole scene look very dry almost like bones to represent a very sullen scene to represent death so everything is supposed to look very bone dry and i i think they did a really good job um, conveying this kind of um, message that they want to convey here so you don't see any you know you don't see any leaves you don't see any any life happiness or anything like that it's all just death and sorrow and and that kind of thing on this scene here up at the top you see jesus is there on the cross and lower and to the right and to the left there are other scenes uh, from Jesus's last night before the crucifixion the Last Supper the kiss of Judas and other scenes including his death and burial and resurrection so this is the end of the church part of the tour if you go to the right there's also a museum downstairs and so it gives a lot of the history of the building of the church and all kinds of interesting facts and pictures and things like that so definitely you should check that out also if you come here so that's the end of the tour of la sagrada familia basilica um, in my opinion, it's one of the most impressive, unique churches I've ever seen. If you think of one that's more impressive, please leave it in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. All of these things help my small channel with the YouTube algorithms to get shown to a larger audience. Thank you for watching.